Welcome back. We're here looking at the indices, and this is going to be my weekly forecast for June 20, 2022. If you like to support the channel, you're going to hit the subscribe button down here in the corner, hit the like button, the bell button to see our new videos, and let's get to it. We'll start by looking at the NASDAQ. And as you can see, we are down more than 30% for a year, but we're approaching significant support levels. And when I say that, it's basically the 200 moving average right here. And that is fairly significant because if we scroll out, we can basically see that every time we get fairly close towards the, the 200 moving average, we tend to bounce in this market. So we can see here back in 2015, 2016, as an example, we can go also for further back um, towards the Great Recession. And every single time we have gotten towards this moving average, we have tend to bounce. Also here in 2018, didn't really get towards the 200 moving average, but fairly close, and then we bounced. Also in in 2020, where in the, this was 2018, this was in 2020, uh, when the coronavirus hit, we got all the way down to the 200 moving average and then had a V-shaped recovery. So I would be fairly surprised if we just sliced through the 200 moving average. If we do, then there's probably a serious problem in the market and we'll go significantly further. Uh, what I expect for this is that we'll see a more like a bounce before going lower. Uh, we can estimate that by looking at the Fibonacci retracement, because if we say that we know that these are the highs and this is basically support, then we can estimate where this market may bounce if we or we get to if we bounce from the 200 moving average. So we can see that the, the 38.2 Fibonacci retracement is right here at the 13.1K. We can see that the 50 Fibonacci retracement is here at 13.8K. And we can also see that the 61.8 Fibonacci retracement at the 14.5K. And that's probably as far as we will go. And that's right where we find the 50 moving average at this current stage. Uh, for the weekly chart. So what we could see is a bounce from the 200 moving average up towards the 50 and then continuing down. Or that we basically stick around at the 200 moving average sideways going forward and then continue higher. That is also more likely. What I don't really expect for this market is that we'll see this market completely slides through the 200 moving average um, in the next few weeks. If we do, then there is going to be a serious, serious problem in the, in the, in the financial system. We can also look at the, the RSI and see that it's at 30.3 at this current stage. And so we are on the edge of being oversold in the weekly chart. And usually when we get to those levels, you can see that back here in 2020, when we bounced, uh, we got towards the, the, the 30 in the RSI. Also here in 2018, where we also have a bounce. So considering that we have the 200 moving average here and we're at 30 in the weekly chart in the RSI, those things should indicate that we will have a bounce before it going significantly lower. MACD is still significantly uh, bearish at this point and so is the stochastic. So, um, it's going to be interesting to see what basically happened, but my take is that we will most likely have a bounce due to the fact that historically we have had bounces when we've gotten towards the 200 moving average in the weekly chart. So let's look at the, the S&P 500. So S&P 500 is significantly overstretched at this point. So um, Nasdaq has been selling off uh, far more than the S&P has. Uh, it's only the last two weeks that we have seen these massive two uh, drops in the S&P. We are way outside of the bullish band and we're at 30.6 in our side. So uh, also here we could see a bounce, but we could also see a um, uh, further drop towards the 200 moving average before uh, uh, seeing that bounce. If you look at the Fibonacci retracement for uh, the S&P 500, we can see that if we say that the 200 moving average is the bottom, this is the high, and then we had the 38.2 right here at the four, uh, 4,003. 
we have the 50 here at the 4,159, and then we have the 38 point at the, at the 4310. So this is probably as far as this will go. And that could mean that if we drop towards the 200 moving average, we could rally up towards this level here before continuing downwards. But if we look at uh, how this has behaved in the past, we can see that in 2018, we hit the 200 moving average and then rallied. In 2020, we crossed the 200 moving average fairly significantly before rallying. So still V-shaped recoveries, but we had to also take into account that the Fed was basically helping the market here. Fed is not going to help the market here, or they are not signaling at this current stage that they are going to help the market. If it completely falls apart, then yes, they will step in and they will they will try to save the market, but but uh, at the current stage, due to the fact that we are significantly oversold and overstretched, it is more likely that we are going to see a bounce before we see this market tumble further to the downside. Probably something similar to what we saw here going forward. So this is best in the best case scenario. Uh, this is also the 50 could be here or the 38 also here. So we could also see something similar to that. So let's look at the Dow Jones. So Dow Jones has also started to fall off, even though that uh, Dow Jones has been more resilient uh, compared to the Nasdaq and the um, and the S and P, uh, due to, to the fact that there are not that many uh, tech companies in the uh, Dow Jones. But also here we have pulled towards the bottom of the bullish band, rallied up towards the twenty simple moving average broken down 20 simple moving average and then broken down yet again and now we're approaching the 200 moving average so 20 simple moving average in the Dow Jones has been significant so we could see a rally up towards that point before continuing lower continuing this um, channel to the downside we could also look at the Fibonacci retracement for uh, for the Dow Jones and see that if this is the bottom then we see that the 38.2 is at uh, 32,276. That is, uh, the 50 is at 33.1, and the 61.8 is at 34.1. So that is right here at the, the 50 moving average, which is traveling this way. But 38.2 uh, is where I basically uh, most likely will hit the 20 simple moving average. Um, and then get rejected as I draw it up here. If you look at technical English, we can see the MACD is bearish, sarcastic is bearish, and the RSI is still above 30, uh, 30 but on the edge of being oversold. So we can also look at the, uh, the historical patterns for this. We can see that we have bounced from the 200 moving average several times in the past. Uh, we got fairly close in 2008 and then rallied and in 2020 uh, we just completely sliced through and again and then went higher. So it's going to be interesting to see what basically happens here, whether or not we have something that resembles this or this or that we completely sliced through the, um, uh, the 200 moving average and then go lower. So let's look at the DAX. So DAX is looking absolutely terrible, uh, but we it is, we have a bottom here that is most likely going to get tested uh, next week. We are still above 30 in the RSI, and we are not that overstretched in the, in the bullish band. So uh, if US indices start to rally, they most likely will also have an effect on the net on the DAX. Um, but this will most likely come down towards the world economy. If that slows and the world demand for Russia, uh, for German cars and German, German manufacturing uh, drops, then we will see a drop in the Nasdaq and everything points to that. But the highs here are roughly 14.7 and the lows here are at 12.4. So we have some... Um, 
room to the downside before we hit this level here. This was um, mainly due to the reason that we had a war in, in Eastern Europe and this got completely overshot to the to the downside and there we, we have this massive bounce. But breaking below this level, that opens the door towards give or take uh, 11.5. And after that, we probably are looking at the lows of uh, 2022 and uh, when we went all the way down to 8,290. So we can see a bounce from this level. We have resistant make a double bottom here, but breaking below this, that opens the door to these another levels and uh, way to the downside. To the upside, probably the 20 simple moving average moving in this direction will uh, be uh, resistant. So if we have a bounce on the Monday session, then we'll probably get rejected around this area. So let's look at the VIX. So VIX um, is struggling around this area here. This is 33.2 give or take. Got heavily rejected um, on Friday and uh, we saw a fair bit, a bit of a rally at the US session. Uh, still in the green, so the still uh, volatility is still increasing, so the fear factor is still in, in the market. And um, at this current stage, um, Bitcoin and all of the other cryptocurrencies are falling like rocks in this weekend. So if that continues, that could have a negative effect on especially the tech sector. Usually then there has been a positive correlation between cryptocurrencies and, and the tech sector. and and it has been that uh, cryptos have moved first and then the tech sector, Nasdaq, for example, has moved after that. The correlation broke down um, uh, earlier this year, but it has basically, um, there has been quite a bit of a correlation between those the last two weeks. But here we most likely will see this market drop towards the 50 moving average, moving this direction down towards the 24 or the 200 moving average right underneath. So both of those should offer massive uh, resistance. This is kind of building off the four towards higher volatility. If we break below, above 33.2, then we're most likely gonna see 36, uh, 36 and then 40. Um, after that, this uh, there's gonna be just as much fear in the market as we saw back in 2020 and uh, we'll probably see the market drop significantly further uh, at that point. If you look at technical indicators, we can see the MACD is still is still bullish, stochastic is bullish, and the RSI is bullish, and there's a lot of room to the upside. So this could continue also on Monday going uh, higher. If we do, then we will most likely see stocks and indices uh, drop even further. So let's look at the US 10 year. So this kind of looks like a shooting star. If that is the case, then we'll most likely have a significant drop in um, the US 10 year. So this is a fairly uh, nasty looking candlestick, a very bearish candlestick. So we went all the way up towards roughly 3.495 and ended up at 3.231. So we could see this market drop towards uh, the 50 uh, move, now 20 simple moving average before going higher. If we drop below this level here, then the 50 moving average comes into play. And then we have the 200 moving average, which should be um, moving in this direction. So bring it below here, opposite to the 50, and then we'll see a fair amount of, of um, bullishness in the market. And if we see the VIX and the 10 year uh, drop, then it should be um, a bit of confirmation that we most likely will see a rally for the next uh, few weeks in the stock market. If we look at the um, technical news, we can see the MACD is still bullish. Stochastic has crossed the signal line becoming bearish and the RSI is, um, uh, is still bullish and is significantly uh, overbought at this point. So hope you find it helpful. If you want to support your channel by subscribing, hit the like button, the bell button to see our new videos and all my trades and uh, my portfolio are available in the link down below. So good luck and thank you very much.